Bethel here is going to do step one, which is key, and you have to be careful not to over scratch the surface. We're going to go slow, and then we're going to go slowly up in RPMs in every corner and the whole surface. So now that all your sanding preparation or grinding is done, it's very important that you get all the dust off the floor with a good shop vac. I like an extension, keep it from doing this floor closer to the ground, but also a good mopping or a good wipe down with just plain water works really well. Today we're going to be using a water-based epoxy, so water is not going to hurt anything. So we've added our part B to our bucket. Now we're going to add the part A to the part B to ensure proper mixing. After we do that, we mix with our power drill for a minimum of two minutes. As with any epoxy or any paint, you want to cut in your edges and then start rolling away from the walls. So we're going to start this inner wall and work our way this way. I like a two inch throwaway brush because they're easy to throw away, exactly what they're called, and we don't have to wash them afterwards. Bethel here is going to start rolling. Now that he's just about finished rolling and he's working in sections that are about four feet, it's imperative that you put down your chips into the paint while it's still wet. If not, nothing's going to stick. Now watch how I put these chips down for an even and nice looking floor. Notice that I'm turning my wrist around and I'm not chunking the flick, the chips into the paint. This will only get you patterns that look uneven that don't look professional. If you were doing a large area, we would recommend spike shoes, which you'll probably see on our next video. And if you were ever to put too much, too many paint chips down, or maybe you didn't like the pattern you made, you can always roll some more paint over it and apply more chips. It's pretty forgiving, once it's down and dry, it's really hard to get rid of. So we've allowed the first coat and the paint flakes to dry and now because we are in Texas and it is August, it's about 120 degrees in here and we're going to put down our clear coat at this point. Notice Bethel's cut in the edges, it goes on milky and if you look back this way, it's starting to look a little good. With clears, as with all water-based clears, they go on milky and they dry clear but you've got to be really careful not to over apply. Use a 3 8 mohair or white dove by Purdy and apply it as thin as you can. Remember, it's a clear coat. You can over apply a clear coat and have a big problem 
That is next. Excuse me. That's gonna be a big problem. It's gonna come back, and all the coding that you've done is gonna be ruined. So make sure you roll one way and you come back and you roll across to get some texture and a nice even coating all the way through. So we're now working the edges and working away from the edges as we would with any floor coating. Not to make sure that we're not over applying because like I said before, over application can lead to a ruined product. Now the way to do it and to kind of gauge it unless you know how to read a mill gauge is to apply the product in the center, work your way away into a previously coated area move it across and back. What you want to be able to hear is a dry roller rolling across the surface like so. I don't know if you can hear it. You always want to cross patch all your rolling. That's the reason we're wearing spike shoes so we can walk over our previously coated surface without marking. Notice the sound of the roller is barely making any sound. This helps you to know where to apply more coating or less coating. Clear coats are tricky. Be careful what you're doing when you're using a water-based or solvent-based product. A good way and a preferred way to add your anti-slip is to actually sprinkle it lightly onto your clear coat. Anti-slips will levitate and will leave marks after you put them on or mix them into your paint. So Bethel here is going to demonstrate how to do it. Notice he's sprinkling it slowly into the product. Do not broadcast it like a sand or anything like that. This is plain silica. We prefer a shark grip. Juan Carcaño again here with Immaculate Painting. As you can see, the finished product is complete. We have moved all our junk back in and we want to go over the steps that we, went, that we did. One was the sanding to prepare the floor. Two was a top coat, which we broadcast our chips into. And three, a clear coat with an anti-slip, which you can hear, which will really be safe for going outside when it's wet or it's raining. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or don't hesitate to call. Thank you.